paper. <laughs> Hello, Bones and Gills. There's something fishy in the basement tonight. You might say I'm waiting with bated breath. This ought to tip the scales. Hmm, looks like they're not biting, but you will be. Nail biting, that is. Here's a little nibble about tonight's story. A lurid tale guaranteed to hook your attention. I call it Gone Fishing. Body your mama, fish. He ain't going anywhere, right, kid? Did you know they found a fish at the bottom of the marina's trench, seven miles below the surface? That's the problem with you, Randy. Uncle Ned! You always got your nose stuffed in a book. It's time you learned what life was all about. By fishing? It ain't just fishing. It's man against nature, survival of the fittest. It's showing these bug-eyed slime buckets who's boss. Ah! Quit being so squeamish. Go on, take the hook out. But it's kind of small. Why don't we just throw it back and... Leave the squirming to them. It's time you graduated from wimp school. <laughs> we'll be doing this before the week's out. Get rid of the garbage. We're going in. I said get rid of it. Aren't you going a little fast, Uncle? Uncle Ned! <laughs> you almost hit them! They don't call them sitting ducks for nothing! <laughs> This is an awful lot of fish. Once I caught near to a hundred in a little over an hour. Most were small, but what the heck. And you ate them all? Ate? Are you kidding? Then what do you do with them? Same thing I'm gonna do with these. Can't just leave them. What's a pile of fish guts? Than to throw them back. What for? So we can spend tomorrow catching the same ones again? They're only fish, Randy. You're talking like they're human or something. Well, who knows? Maybe way down deep, the fish have a world just like ours. That's just your problem. You read too much, kid. You're too busy imagining things to see the facts of life. If you bite the hook, you pay the price. That's what fishing's all about. I don't call that fishing. You'll learn. Now, get some rest. We're up at the crack of dawn. Tomorrow I'll let you use my special lure. I call it the Ripper. That sounds mean. Go to sleep. And no reading. One of the most peculiar species is the South American talking catfish, which growls when removed from the water. Wow! <laughs> Uncle Ned? Uncle Ned?
So how they bite me? Never better. I must have left 50 bass on the beach yesterday. On the beach? Something wrong with that? Even the best fishermen never take more than they can eat. You got your way, I got mine. I had a weird dream last night. Yeah, a six-foot catfish in pajamas. Do you believe it? I think it was trying to tell me something. Maybe it was. The old ones say, nature speaks in many voices. The wind rustling in the trees, the echo of ice shifting on the frozen lake, the sound of thunder. Now don't go filling his head with fool ideas. He's got too many of those already. Ouch! Get the hook out, quick! Over here. Hold still. Yeah! Will that be cash? Randy! What's wrong with you, boy? You look like I got a wasp down your shorts. Let's get out of this dump. See ya. Huh? Sorry, I... Let me see that. No hook. I'm gonna make sure you nail a fish if it's the last thing I do. And with this, you can't miss. Cast it. But... Cast it! Pretty good. Maybe you got a little of your old Uncle Ned in you after all. You got one, kid! That's it. Give him some line. He can't get away. That's the secret of my ripper. Makes him swallow it so he hook him by the guts. But, Uncle, I don't want Not to. Not too fast. He'll snap the line. What are you doing, kid? Stop! You'll break the line. Hey! You did that on purpose. You wanted him to get away. And you lost me my best lure. Don't think this is over. Don't say a word. You may not want to catch it, but you sure are going to eat it. I'm sorry, Uncle Ned. It's just I, that I really think the fish are trying to tell me something. I'll tell you something, boy. We're going back out first thing in the morning. But... No more butts and no more daydreams. Order, or I'll order for you. Ah! No! Randy! Randy! Ah, let him go. Give me the CK special platter. <laughs> and leave the heads on. I said you were gonna catch fish, and I meant it. What do you know about fishing? You're not a fisherman. You're a bully. Now wait one second. No, what you do is wrong, Uncle Ned. And you have to stop or else... Or else what? I can dump all the fish I want, because there's no one going to stop me. Maybe... Maybe there is. Who, you? I've had it. Run to the bait shop and wait for your folks. But Uncle Ned, listen to me. I got some fishing to do. Get! Take the bait and pay the price. Looks like this is some poor sucker's unlucky day. <laughs> huh? Yeah! But who knows, Uncle Gil? Maybe people have a world just like us, only on top of the land. Stop daydreaming, Carvey. You've got to learn to control that imagination. Are you going to catch any more today, Uncle Gil? No, Carvey. 
A good manor fish never catches more than he can can. Can? Ned's really got in <gasps> over his head. <laughs> Too bad I heard he had a pretty good job <laughs> before he got canned. <laughs> Great. I just get my car fixed and it dies on me. Yes, I want to rent a vehicle. One with scare conditioning, freight wall tires, gore on the floor. Uh, one moment, please. While I'm waiting, let me tell you about this next sinister saga. It comes straight from one of the most horrifying places on Earth. A place where zombies walk the halls, and the screams of the tormented echo from behind closed doors. Of course, I'm talking about high school. <laughs> okay, baby. I promise this won't hurt a bit. <laughs> they may think I'm a fool for trying. What the? Ow! <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Kev. Now, who'd have thought the horn would be the one thing on this car that actually worked? <laughs> Horn's the only thing that works. Good one, Eddie. You know, I can get you a deal on some used parts. A real hot deal, if you get my meaning. I don't get it. Hot, Herman. As in five-finger discount. You mean like ripped off? But Eddie, from the looks of it, Kev doesn't need car parts. He needs a whole new car. <laughs> I don't need any parts. Especially the way you guys get them. I'm going to totally rebuild her. Everything will be 100% original. Did you say original? It'll take years just to scrape the rust off this scrap box. It's a pile of junk. Hey, Eddie, want me to check your oil? <laughs> that crate's junk, and it's going to stay junk. You hear me, Kev? You'll never get it running. So, almost done? Almost. Ready for the big day? What big day? Oh, don't tell me you forgot. <laughs> Our race, twerp. No way, Eddie. I didn't spend all this time fixing up my car just to race with you. You don't want to race because you're chicken. And this junk box has got no guts! Hey! You want a race? You're on. Pull the switch. It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> No, it's dead. What do you mean, dead? Well, I mean, you can almost see through the brake shoes, the head's cracked, the linkage is trashed, and a couple of tie rod ends wouldn't hurt either. What are we gonna do, Eddie? What we always do, Toad Boy. I don't know about this, Eddie. What if someone gets hurt? What are you worrying about? No one's gonna get hurt. Come on, we got lots more to get. Yeah, but my car, it, it just happened. Rash 
rash of car accidents credited to clever thieves. That's us! They checked out the cars, Eddie. They know they crashed because we took the parts! We're lucky no one got hurt. Does it say Eddie and Herman took the parts? Well, no. I'd say if no one got hurt, they were the lucky ones. Yeah, but no more parts, Eddie. Okay? We need one more, Hermie. And I know just where to get it. <laughs> You're a real beauty. Nothing else like you. We're gonna be quite a pair. <laughs> well, maybe we haven't got all the bugs worked out. But even so, tomorrow we'll show that creep Eddie just what you're made of. Night, girl. <laughs> Let's go shopping. <laughs> Come on, Hermie. Let's make the switch. But, Eddie, that junk part's baffed. If it blows during the race, it might throw him into a spin. He'll be lucky to walk away from. He called me a creep. Give me a wrench. I said, give me a wrench! Ah! It's trying to blind me! It's a car, Herman! You want to get even? Hand me the wrench! <laughs> Come on, girl. You can do it for me, okay? Finally got even with that egghead Kevin. I feel like celebrating. Give me a double jelly filled cheeseburger on a bear claw. Me too. Too bad he only got a cut forehead. Yeah, a couple days off, then he'll be back at school, and he can start on another car. <laughs> <laughs> See how he acted when his wheels got totaled? It was like he lost his best friend. He did. <laughs> Good one, Eddie. <laughs> What the? How did he? Never mind how. Looks like he didn't learn his lesson the first time. I guess we're gonna have to teach him again. What gives? Maybe it's some kind of joke? Yeah? Well, we'll see who has the last laugh. Come on!
It's our fault. All our fault. Just don't let him get us. Yeah, she was a real beauty, all right. Just like you're gonna be. With the parts I managed to salvage from the wreck and some tender loving care. Yep, we're gonna be quite a pair. I'd say Eddie and Herman's auto body experience left them a little car sick, wouldn't you? Fortunately, they learned their lesson before anyone got seriously hurt. Nuts! Being stuck on hold drives me crazy! Maybe I'll just run down to the graveyard and dig up a used car. Maybe a hot little doom buggy, just like the one that made such an impact on Eddie and Herman. So until next time, safe monstering! Ha <laughs> ha